In the midst of earnings season, we seem to have a few different stories that just won't go away. You know, this AT&T and Time Warner merger has really simmered down, but another merger is getting headlines every day. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. Did you know that T-Mobile and Sprint are thinking about, uh, you know, getting together? Yeah, merger style. See, they tried to do this once before in 2014, and uh, people put the kibosh on that. They said, no dice. That is going to uh, muddy the waters of competition far too much. So far during this, the FCC has recently declared the market sufficiently competitive, basically saying they're not going to say that a T-Mobile merger with Sprint isn't going to work. They're hands off on this. They think it's potential, right? Okay, maybe it is. I'm not here to say it is or it isn't. Then the next thing that we heard was T-Mobile and Sprint, they both have uh, earnings calls in the 20s of October, 24, 25, I believe, and that we were going to hear actual news that this merger was taking place, that they were going forward with it. They'd worked out an agreement. This is supposed to be, you know, like they're trying to figure out the value of Sprint in regards to the value of T-Mobile, who's going to be in the management structure, where the headquarters are going to be. There's a lot of, a lot of different stuff going on, but today we find out that the career staff at the Justice Department likely are going to recommend against the merger. Do they have any say? Well, they have as much say as the next line of defense. It's going to be one of these things where we're really going to tally up who says what, and eventually somebody's going to end up having the veto. This always ends up going down a big daisy chain of 50 different departments that need to say yes or no, and then a Brazilian regulatory board is going to hold things up anyways. But right now, this is probably going to be a no in the merger, in the merger, uh, between T-Mobile and Sprint. Now, the actual career staff of the Justice Department, what they are saying is that T-Mobile as a standalone company is fine. They're gonna allow T-Mobile to continue doing its aggressive advertising that it's doing, basically trying to soak away customers from AT&T and Verizon. They're allowing that to happen in the market space for T-Mobile to kind of get away with, let's say, advertising that's not as kosher. And that's why we see T-Mobile numbers rising so much in comparison to the other big boys. And the big boys know what's going on, right? They're so big already. They can lose a, a couple of customers, but it's really making T-Mobile into something. T-Mobile's becoming a very fortified number four, and they're being told by the Justice Department they're going to be allowed to continue doing this type of advertising, which I imagine if this merger does go through, this type of advertising is totally off the table. They are not going to allow, with just three major companies, a company to basically try to circumvent the rules and do some scandalous type of advertising to get customers to come to them as opposed to the competitors because... These guys will be on equal footing with the competitors, Verizon and AT&T. There's no question. If these, if Sprint and T-Mobile merge together, you now have three powerhouses. You don't have two powerhouses, Sprint, who's a good third player, and then T-Mobile, who's way down the list, but still really making some moves in the market. You're going to have three big powerhouses. So um, they would. the big problem is they would have, if they merge together, more than half of the prepaid market. So a lot of people are concerned with the fact that low-income people who are more likely to buy prepaid cell phones with half the market being dictated by the Sprint T-Mobile merger, would there be like a price issue, maybe some price gouging? You know, like it all comes down to availability. It's, it's not as competitive. And I mean, if that's really their only issue... I mean, I don't really see that as a major issue because you could kind of put some caveats onto what they could actually do with that saying, if we allow this to go through, you know you have a part of this market share and they can allow some of that market share to be given back maybe in the same advertising form. Let AT&T and Verizon, you know, like get a little bit of your guys' prepaid stuff off of you by, you know, a little bit of scandalous advertising yourself. Why not? But as of right now, a little bit of a roadblock and a story that seems to be continuing on. I'm sure it's going to be taking up a lot of headlines as we move forward in earnings season. And we're probably not scheduled for an October 24th or 25th deal on the table because there's going to be a few other departments that want to have their say and if this merger is going to be okay. So much like uh, Time Warner and AT&T, we are going to sit on our hands and wait and... Uh, expect the unexpected. That's usually what happens in these deals. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, leave a thumbs up for this video, leave a thumbs up for all the videos. How do you not thumbs up the videos? And leave us a comment. We like to hear from you. We want to know what you think. We want to know what you think about Sprint and T-Mobile and AT&T and Time Warner and just, you know, what you're doing this weekend. We want to know. We also want you to have a good day.